Hello and welcome to this video on Hogwarts Legacy, one of our favourite subjects that we like talking about on this channel. Today in particular we are talking about Hogsmeade. Now what is Hogsmeade for those of you who don't know, I imagine most of you if not all of you do, it is the all wizard town which sits just outside of Hogwarts where the students of Hogwarts are allowed to visit. Now, it was founded in the 10th century, and it is, in fact, the only all-wizard town in the whole of Britain, um, which, uh, first off, gives, uh, obviously, an inter interesting dynamic, which means, um, much like Hogwarts, we can go around, we can be wizards, we don't have to hide ourselves, because there isn't going to be any muggles there seeing what we're doing. So that's probably the first thing to say. Um, now, since 1714... Third-year students from Hogwarts and above have been permitted weekend trips to the village, which is interesting from the perspective that you kind of think, is the game going to have a day cycle? Is it going to have a week cycle? Is it going to have, you know, how's that cycle going to work? And you think, initially you think to yourself, okay, well, that means, you know, you can have all your lessons during the week and potentially Saturday because some schools do that. Um, but what we'll be able to do here is at the weekends we'll be able to go to Hogsmeade, which is partially correct, Um I say partially because actually um, the way that it works at Hogwarts is only between three and four times a year are students actually allowed at the weekends to go to Hogsmeade. Um, so it's not like every weekend you'll be able to go there, which again creates an interesting dynamic, which is if we do want to freely go there, which you would imagine somehow you would be able to if this is going to give you that sort of open world free roaming feel to it, it means we're going to have to be able to go there in secret which which should in, uh, be an interesting edge to it, in which case, you know, we can go however we, whenever and however we want. Maybe it'll be through some secret tunnel, some secret spell. I don't know. I'm sure they can do something interesting in that, and I imagine that they will. Now, in terms of the shops that there are actually in Hogsmeade, there is, there is a lot, right? So there is actually over 20 shops and buildings and points of interest that we actually know about, which we know from the ha Harry Potter films, the books, the franchise, and what have you. Uh, and actually, when you look at those, some of them are modern. So you've got, for example, Madden Puddyfoot's Tea Shop and Zonko's Joke Shop, which are too new to be have been there back when this game, so when Hogwarts Legacy is going to be set. But that being said, um, they are actually shops. So you'd imagine that you could put something else there. You know, again, the tea shop could still be a tea shop. It could just be called something else. And the joke shop, maybe that will be something else. Because like I say, that's a bit too new. But actually, if you um, think about all the rest of the shops, there are actually quite a few which have been there a long time. So for example, you've got Honey Dukes, which is the very famous sweet shop. That is, I imagine, one of the ones you've heard of. That was opened up in 1641. So that should be there. That'll be a very interesting one to visit. See what sweets we have in there. We know that the sweets are a very uh, entertaining part of the wisdom world. You've also got the three broomsticks, which is um, an inn that is said to be as old as the town. You also have the hog's head, which again is an old inn, so they're all there. And there's some other ones as well, like there's a shop called Tomes and Scrolls, which is a bookshop which opened up in 1768. So like I say, we already get a picture that, that some of these will be there. And actually, like I say, there's good reason to believe that all 20 or just over 20 of these places will be able to, to be there. Now, one place which I think is potentially interesting, I call this more of a point of interest, is the Shrieking Shack. Now, the reason I say that's interesting is obviously, or for those of you who remember, um, it was called the Shrieking Shack because that is where Lupin um, turned into a werewolf. People heard screams and Dumbledore encouraged the rumour that it was haunted and people stayed away from this old abandoned building. Um, what I think would be quite nice if they did in the game was would be to have the Shrieking Shack, which they should do. Obviously, it won't be called the Shrieking Shack, but it'd be nice to see it not abandoned, to see it in some other guise, somewhere we could visit. Again, I'd like to think that, that it's something you could potentially put into a mission or have a, as a real point of interest, because I think that'd be a nice tie-in um, and a bit of an Easter egg for fans, really. Now, the other thing to say about Hogsmeade is, you know, when you watch the trailer and you see the... Um, the cart going in with everything on the back of it, you, on the first instinct, you think to yourself, okay, well, that person's been to Diagon Alley. 
which may be true. But the other thing is actually in Hogsmeade, because we don't know where all that stuff's going to come from, whether you're going to get it, whether someone else is going to get it for you. But in Hogsmeade, you do actually have the ability to pick up all the things that you need. So, for example, you have a wand shop, you have a book shop, you have a quill shop, a cauldron shop, you have a wisdom wear shop, music shops, herbology. The list goes on, right? So everything you need, you can get to Hogsmeade. So that just means that, you know, maybe it's Hogsmeade that we go to at the beginning of the game, or maybe that's where the things come from. You know, it's a way for them to completely take Diagon Alley out of it, which they may or may not do. Now, overall, then, if we just think about everything we've said there, I mean, that's a lot of shops, right? Um, and for me, you know, I want Hogsmeade to feel like a living, breathing space. I mean, you think about some other games, um, a game like Witcher 3 was very good um, at, at making towns feel very live. Um, but you get other games sometimes, they've got a load of buildings, you can't get into them. They kind of feel like they're the shell of the building and it's a, a dark space inside. Um, and I kind of, I want that living, breathing edge. And I think with all those shops that, that should add to that. I think also if you get sort of people moving around the town, a bit of a bit of bustle there, I think that would be quite nice. Particularly again, if you, there's other buildings, houses that you can go into, just give you that feel that you can kind of go wherever you want, which I think is important. And like I say, with that volume of shops that hopefully they do put in there, I think that should uh, be something that we get. Now, in terms of what do I think we're going to be able to do in Hogsmeade? Well, you know, from the list of what we just said, we should be able to get supplies. There's plenty of places to socialise from. I imagine there'll be missions and side missions there. And also, you'll be, um, you know, it'd be great for a general free roam just to go around a wizarding town. Now, we know that the Wizarding World uh, franchise is big on secret societies and things like that and hidden places. So I wouldn't be surprised and I kind of expect that you'll have some sort of mysterious place or thing going on there where, you know, be going under a tunnel or some building somewhere which should be quite interesting. It'll probably be a brand new building from any of the ones we just discussed. Now, I would say that a person could be forgiven for thinking to themselves that Hogsmeade was potentially just going to be a little side part of the game. Uh, a little bit you visit once or twice and you know maybe you're getting in there in one shop and that's about it but actually you know if you think about everything we just said in this video there is really a lot you can do there you really can build this into a really big part of the game and uh, I'm kind of expecting they're going to do that actually I think Hogsmeade is going to prove to be a major part of the game it's one of the very first places outside of Hogwarts we know is going to be in the game um, so like I say it should be really really interesting uh, and I'm very much looking forward to see what they do with Hogsmeade I think it's going to be a really great part of the game if you've enjoyed this video, um, I'd invite you to hit the like button and um, also would love you to be part of a community we're trying to build here. So if you'd like to do that, hit the subscribe button and drop any of your comments, thoughts, feelings you have about this video in below and I will have a read of them and I will see you on the next video.